Hi, my name is Margherita Parigin and I'm a PhD student and a research assistant at the University of Geneva in Switzerland. Today I will briefly present you a research project I worked on together with Professor Michele Mauri at the Density Design Lab at the Polytechnic of Milan in Italy. The project is related to my doctoral thesis and it combines literary criticism with data visualization. Our goal was to explore some properties of the non-fiction writing of an Italian author, Italo Calvino. Uh, let's start uh, from the language you use to talk about the argumentation. Here we have some metaphors related to argumentation. The line, progressive or circular argumentation, speech orientation, stance talking, lateral thinking. All of these metaphors underline the spatial dimension of the argumentation. The idea of the line as a symbolic image to represent a speech is old. In fiction, it is related to the concept of plot, in Italian, trama, as something textile. In general, giving a concrete form to something abstract is also a way to gain clarity. It is part of that cognitive habit that makes us want to take a concept and materialize it in order to handle it better. These metaphors suggest that there is an argumentation space, that we can move through it as if on a map. This type of reasoning is called spatial thinking. Here, a brief definition formulated by the National Academies of Science. Spatial thinking uses representation to help us remember understand, reason and communicate about the property of and relations between objects represented in space, whether or not those objects themselves are inherently spatial. Once we detected the presence of metaphorical language related to the space for talking about the argument, we wondered what might happen if we try to compare two or more essays based not on their content, but on their visual form. The idea was to delete the text, erase it, and instead use a diagram to formulate research hypotheses at first based only on visual similarities or dissonances. The diagrams, in fact, I quote, may be primarily a technique of intellectual orientation, itself related to the cartographic impulse, a cultural technique that enables you to find your way in unknown areas of knowledge. This practice, obviously, reminds the model of analysis introduced by Franco Moretti, defined as distant reading. The presentation is structured in two principal steps that will trace the different developmental stages of the project, data and visualization. So uh, visually transforming the structure of an argument is not an innovative exercise. There is usually a tendency to show the hierarchical relationships between the various parts of the argumentative speech has it possible to look at in these two examples. We had the condition in mind to create a visualization. The transferability of the method, it was essential to identify a type of data and a visual approach that could be reproduced with sufficient elasticity on a different corpus and the automation of the data collection. To ensure transferability, we wanted to work on a type of text element that was automatically traceable, whose category was present in any essay. In line with both conditions, we decided to work on the presence of argumentative connectives. The connectives 
define the relationships that logically structure the meanings of the sentence and text. These linguistic particles are the joints of argumentation. They articulate, unraveling the discourse, escaping the physical dimension of the printed line to dynamize in the text and hierarchize his various parts. For our study, we relied on the classification proposed within LICO, Lexicon of Italian Connectives, edited by Anna Feltracco, Elisabetta Jetstek, Bernardo Magnini and Manfred Stede. LICO is part of the Connective Lex Info project, a site, website, developed by Felix Dombeck from 2017 at the Department of Linguistic in the University of Potsdam. LICO is a catalogue of Italian connectives consisting of 173 entries. Each of these connectives is classified according to the logical relations it can introduce. These relations are structured hierarchically on three levels. As Anna Feltracco and other scholars explain in their paper, in the first level, the class level, the relations are grouped in four major classes, temporal, consist, conti, uh, contingency, comparison and expansion. The second level, the type level, specifies further the semantics of the class level. And the third one, subtype level, varies according to the role of the two arguments involved in the relation. To not multiply the reading paths within the visualization, we decided to consider only the so-called class level. Classes correspond to the pen discourse tree bank to a 2.0 classification system. So now um, we want to turn to illustrate the corpus of essays on which we worked. My PhD is uh, dedicated to an Italian author, Italo Calvino. Calvino is one of the most important authors of the Italian literary scene in the 20th century. During his life, he published about 200 short stories and about 20 volumes, including novels and collections. Also, during his life, he collaborated with several newspapers, writing many journal articles and essays. Some of them have been collected by the author himself in volumes. Una Pietra Sopra, Discorsi di Letteratura e Società, was published in 1980 and collects 42 essays written between 1955 and 1978. As the title suggests, the volume was considered the summary of the author's intellectual journey, starting from the beginning of his career. Collezione di Sabbia collects 38 essays published between 1974 and 1984. This volume has a strong link with the narrative universe. Some of the essays collected in these pages had in fact been published together with several short stories that were later included in the last collection of Calvino entitled Palmar. First, we converted in TXT format the various essays that make up the two collections. Then, we created a database. We assigned an ID, an identifier, to each text and collected other metadata, like year of publication. Next, we downloaded the LICO database and cleared it of all unnecessary information to obtain a list of argumentative connectives with their associated classes. Finally, we searched for the presence of connectives in the essays, recording their location. Once the dataset collection was complete, uh, we tried to figure out what visual form they might take. At our disposal, we had 
the connectives, their classes, their position in the text, plus any statistical ratios to be calculated on the presence in the individual essay or collection. Before setting up any visualization, it is essential to determine what you actually want to see. And the study of the characteristics of non-fiction writing in Calvino is related to my PhD research, which is dedicated to a phenomenon particular that we call dubitative text. The dubitative text is a phenomenon that characterizes Calvino's narrative production. It determines the development of the narrative through a series of hypotheses, negations, and reformulations. The goal of the visualization was to check the presence of dubitative text in essays in correspondence with certain argumentative features carried by connectives. Regarding how I was able to trace the presence of dubitative text in Calvino's essays, I invite you to look at the paper The Roots of Doubt, fine-tuning a BERT model to explore a stylistic phenomenon, written under the supervision of Professor Mike Kestman. I really apologize for <laughs> this shortcoming in the presentation. Um, so I needed to see two things in parallel, the dubitative text and the connectives. And after a series of prototypes and drawings, I envisioned the visual structure. At first, I didn't know if I wanted to represent the essay as a line on which the, to place the data. But then, because of space issues in the layout, I decided to rotate the line around itself, shaping a circle. The idea was to represent the text with a circular line, thicken the line at the dubitative parts and place connectives in the outer perimeter in the form of colored dots according to the four classes. The visualization was carried out on the observable platform and then it was reworked with the Figma tool. Um, this is the result because I decided to create static visualizations that would allow me a glance at the two collections. And to explain how it works, let's zoom in. Each essay is represented by a circle whose diameter is normalized. In other words, it does not correspond to the length of the specific essay. The beginning of the text coincides with the top vertex and the end with the opposite end of the circular line, proceeding clockwise. Along the circle, parts of the text considered as dubitative were thickened and colored purple. The longer the line, the greater the area involved in the phenomenon. On the other hand, argumentative connectives appear in the outer perimeter in the form of dots distributed in the space corresponding to the positioning characters they occupy in the text and colored according to the four classes. Let's take a more concrete example to show you how I used the visualization. Here we have the essay Un progetto di pubblico, published on the magazine L'Espresso, the 1st of September 1974. I can calculate some more general information about the essay that can orientate my reading, but actually the visualization allows me to check how the dubitative text is related to the use of connectives. This is what I discovered thanks to the visualization. First, that the dubitative text is related to the class expansion, so the red dots, and in a minor way to comparison the yellow dots. When it is related to doubt, the class expansion, is it essentially used to clarify the content, like in the example 1, 2 and 4. When there are alternatives instead, the sentence is not considered as in the case with the occurrence at the top that is not classified as dubitative, because thanks to the visualization I could check 
this group of red dots all together and see why it wasn't dubitative. Also, the dubitative text is located in the central part of the essay, which corresponds to the heart of the reasoning. And finally, the visualization allowed me also to verify the functioning of the BERT model, checking the existence of a dubitative component in each occurrence. These are just some of the reasoning points. For my PhD, I applied this kind of reading on the integrity of the collection, allowing me to study the relationship between the dubitative phenomenon and the argumentation in Calvino. In parallel, this project has implemented a visualization system versatile that can be easily reconverted for another type of research. Instead of dubitative text, one could work on other types of textual sequences, dialogues or description, to give a few examples. And the search for connectives could also be replaced with the search for other elements, locations, proper names, adjectives, and so on. We think that the condition then on the transferability of the method has been achieved. And in the future, we'd like to use different data to test how well the visualization works. If I try to formulate a closing remark, I would like to focus on the main theme of this conference, collaboration. The collaboration between different fields of research, such as literary criticism and visual design, challenges us to think differently questioning our traditional working practices and pushing us to explore our objects of study in innovative ways. Somewhat like the drawing Calvino chooses to put on the cover of Collezione di Sabbia, in which we simultaneously see the profile of a fish, but also an eye looking at us. Remembering probably us that it's always a matter of viewpoint and that the same shape can create totally different universe that we have to explore. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>